at that long moment in the bed together the night before where she was trying to speak and I felt what she was trying to say and I would she said some things you know she mentioned Rudy and she said sorry to me and she you know thinking about it because just thinking about sitting next to her with water waiting for her to open her eyes and watching her face and, and reach her mouth reaching for the water I knew she was so thirsty <laughs> but it was so hard for her to take a drink and she would make this face with her mouth <laughs> and it kills me it just kills me She couldn't do much, and there was one day where I, sh she was home with hospice, and she wanted to take a shower, and it was a day that finally we were alone, because she, there was a lot of uh, people who cared about her when she was home, a lot of people around, and we were left alone, and I gave her a shower, and she was sitting in this chair. And uh, I started to, you know, wash her body and stuff, which wasn't uh, unfamiliar because I had been doing it while she was in bed in the hospital. But she was just so vul vulnerable in that shower. And instead of being upset or worrying about her own body, she... She grabbed a sponge. And, uh, started washing my arm. The arm I was using to wash her. And she looked up at me with this look. It just. I'll never forget. And you know, when she was dying, the morning she was dying, the night before, I just talked and talked and talked in her ear, telling her. I was so proud of her, the way we, the thing that we had become, so proud of her for fighting so hard, telling her it's okay to let go, it's okay to let go. But in the morning, <sighs> you know, her mom was sleeping there that night, and her aunt Kathleen slept in the other room, and there was a couch, but I just couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep, and Rachel had fallen asleep, and her aunt told me, I don't think anything's going to happen tonight. And it was like 2.30 in the morning, so I went upstairs to try to get an hour or so of sleep. And her aunt woke me up and told me to come downstairs, and Rachel had... Rachel was running running towards that door. I knew it in my head. I could see her running, running towards the gates or whatever she was seeing or looking at. It's, you can't prepare for it because in that moment I swatted her back. You know, I was just holding on to her, her body as, as tight as I could. And, 
Her little heart was still beating. And just slowly stopped beating. You just want to pull her back. Just want to pull her back and talk to her. And just talk to her. I wanted to hear what she was thinking about it. I wanted to know if she was scared. I wanted to know if she could feel me holding on to her. <laughs> and it's just so hard to get past those moments because I set this camera up in the room Rachel was in when she was home on hospice care. And, uh, I set up a camera because she was she couldn't be alone. And, uh, I don't know, I kept, like, it was, it just felt, everything felt important. Every medicine she took was strong, and, um, she had a feeding tube that the hospice woman taught me how to change and I would do that every morning. But I didn't, you know, I had started working again a few days a week. And, um, and, um, I didn't want to, her to be, I just wanted to know what was going on and be able to talk to her. So I set this camera up that I could speak to her through. And, um, while I was at work, I would, you know, set my phone up and watch. While I was driving, I would watch and, uh. And I had it set up so if there was a certain amount of chaos or a certain a certain amount of noise, then the camera would take pictures and start recording. And in the very end, it, it, I would press record a lot. So I, <laughs> these horrible moments that you want to move past, I I have them on. I I have video of them, of her. I have pictures of her in the moment she would probably want me to never look back and watch. But, uh, you know, when she died, I just, I felt the first thing I felt was obviously the sorrow and just, uh, just wanting her to come back and begging her this to not be happening and calling out her name holding on to her tight and when her heart just stopped I felt this sense of relief for her I felt this sense of relief for her because she was in so much pain I could just tell she had me in like what? there's nothing to stay around for anymore she couldn't talk she could barely move she couldn't wash herself and, uh So I think in the end she would say it's coming and stuff like that and say it's a good thing and uh, she accept she had accepted what was going on she wanted me to you know to say she said is it time she kept saying is it time to me and I didn't get it until the night before that she meant is it time to die and she needed me to say that it was okay. <laughs> I just, I don't think I'll ever be the same. I still feel like my spirit's gone. And I died with her on that bed. And, uh, I just, I'll never get over it. I fucking miss her so much. And, uh, that song I played in the beginning there is called Losing You, but it's by John Butler Trio. And we kind of introduced to that band because I used to love this dumb band, G Love and Special Sauce. And we went to a concert, me and her brother and her, 
and John Butler Trio opened for them. But they were actually better than G Love. And I found them, that song. It's called Losing You, and it's talking about. You know, the lyrics are something like, I don't don't mind anything except for losing you. And I used to play that a lot for her. I don't. Yeah, man, it's, it's the song. I just didn't want to lose her. I just can't believe I did. I can't believe I'm here alone. I can't believe Rachel's Rachel died. I can't believe she died. It's just so profound thinking about her dying. And after all we had been through through the year and how scary it was. And um, I just want to know that it was okay for her. I want her to come down and tell me that she got what she wanted. It was able to die in bed with my arms around her. I miss her. I just miss her. I, just, and I think about the good times and I listen to stuff like videos of her look at pictures of her and videos of us and, um, when she, before she was sick and that helps but it's just a real heavy thing to see the love of your life die like that and uh, it's really hard for me to move past it helps talking about it because I don't really have any dedicated listeners or anything so I appreciate Anyone who's listened to this, uh, I don't know how you, you haven't shut it off yet, but um, I don't even know if I can listen to someone cry and complain about this kind of thing. But um, all I can tell you, if you don't have someone who's sick or you don't haven't been through this, <laughs> if there's someone in your life that you love. Uh, don't waste time. Uh, if you if you're thinking about getting married, get married. Um, if you're already married, God damn it, hold on to each other and enjoy every moment you have together because it could be gone at any moment. It could be gone, and uh, let me tell you, it's not about the things you buy. It's not about the things you give that person. It's not about anything. Um, uh, anything uh, material it's about the time spent together so enjoy that time relish that time put your phone away maybe and uh, if you are if you do want to document something um, that's meaningful to, to leave behind or to as a, something um, to save the moment write it write it physically write it in your own handwriting that night maybe keep a journal and write something about the day but in the moment just be in the moment because um you're gonna want to remember it and uh as much as i love my phone i'm not big on pulling it out when i'm around company trying to document what's going on especially if something special is happening but man um that camera set up uh something I wrestle with. I, I, I'm not going to delete that footage. Are you kidding me? I, I can't. Um, so it's not on my phone anymore. It's, at least it's put away. It's saved elsewhere. But I don't know. I, I can't, I can't uh, delete it from my mind. And I don't want to. So it's something that keeps me uh, awake every night. It's really affecting my life, so I just, I don't know. I miss her, and uh, I'm grateful that uh, I think in any great love and great couple that lives together and stays together for a long time, one of them will be lucky enough to die in the company of the other one, if, if they're lucky enough. Um, and and uh, they're sick, and they die from being sick, or are getting old. Then the other one will be there with them, and um, I think 